What's up everyone? I must say thank you all that we got year 2K subs! And for that, I want to reward you with this video where I try install Windows on Google Drive. Oh, I made already a uh, one video and many people as well! Oh my god, I do want to make an original content and not steal it from someone. <laughs> I was first who did the idea to the internet and happy squeal, happy squeal, happy squeal, happy squeal, 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 squeal the tech copied me and got 4k views and I got stuck in 100. Um, okay, let's be honest. Well, yes, it is installing to the Google Drive. When you create a VM, save the VAG file into your Google Drive desktop app and boom! But you must also check if you have on your preferences stream mode instead of syncing mode. But if we look closely, it is not a normal Windows installation. It is just installing a VM and the files, like the one files, like when you have a disk file in another disk and that's it so it is actually not installing it directly to the google drive but is here a way like running the setup in a real pc doing the bootable flash drive well yeah but there's two problems with this one that the processes of google drive needs to be running but while you're in boot screen the google drive will not work and the second Second problem is that in normal HDD you can still run the setup that exe in your current Windows where you run it and then install the Windows. So can we install it on the Google Drive this way? Uh, no. In some reason, the file explorer is really meaning that the Google Drive is physically a drive connected to your computer, but some programs are smart to avoid this. So here we got that. Oh, well, haven't we? So this applies only to the program setup.exe, right? So can we somehow alternatively install Windows on it? Let's find it out. I will use the inspiration again from this specific Enderman's video about manually installing Windows 10. Why is that third time I mentioned this video? Because it is more powerful as it looks what Enderman really showcased there. Look at the command closely. The program that does it possible is Dizen.exe. Dizen is also deployment, image, servicing and management. You can install through Windows features like Net Framework, offline and also online, install offline packages of Windows updates like cap files, etc. Really cool, but it can also move, and that is to apply the image of any dot vim of that SSD file that contains like Windows install, etc. As I said, as it allows you to install Windows into another directory, then this feature will be useful because when you open the Google Drive from File Explorer, it shows you at start two folders and we want it to install to the my drive folder but here i recommend you to watch my video about google drive experimenting where i reveal also some hidden folders for what i don't know but okay so i run a command prompt as like an administrator type the dism on it the image file i choose optimum 11 why not and look at that before this was happening i ran super mirror open up google drive and also open a google drive in the file explorer and look to the tray icon and it was really surprising how this all goes to well oh my god God, look at that. Even the dism is really installing it. I check it again if my files are really streaming and not syncing, but not. And wait a second. Why do you have too much storage on your Google Drive instead of only 15 gigabyte? Did you buy that? No, 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 no. I reveal my secret. I still have my school's Google account even when I am not there anymore. And there I have already one terabyte free of storage. Oh, okay, it is not free, it is paid by the school itself, but whoever knows, for me it is free. Yeah, I rather will not stop there anything because I know that one teacher will know some 
suspicious activity on the drive or on the account and the account will be permanently removed at any time so if i still have the account why i cannot do the experiment i don't know why it shows only 2007 gigabytes but that is no matter anyway as it reached 12k file to be uploaded i better pause the operation by selecting some random text in the command prompt and let those files to be uploaded first why i did this well because i let them before some files that were larger than this and well i got a blue screen what the heck just happened <laughs> What the heck? Yeah, so that I have a hope that it will not be happening the same as before, so I rather didn't do this. So after it was all the files there, I check up the Google Drive in the web if it is not lying and holy sh**. I cannot believe that they are just there. Well, I let continue two hours straight until it some reason ends after 52% and it jumps to 100 as it is done. Um, okay. After I check the files in the file explorer, then I notice something that some folders like program data, it's a good bin folder, aren't there. And that even I have the option to show critical windows hidden files. But but when I tried manually move them, it shows me that the folders are actually there. Um, okay, we'll try to trust it. But hold up a second, will it useful? If you already have the Windows content on the drive, then how do you want to boot it? Bro, you already say that you need the Windows to be warning that the Google Drive will also work. This question I got as well when I finish it up, but I still try anyway. What will happen if I set up a boot from it, BCD boot and the Google Drive. And okay, we can get the files into the drive. Okay, what we do now? As we cannot do in the mine PC anything, what about my another PC? Wait, what do you mean? Hmm, did you guys hear about network boot? It basically allows you, by the name itself, boot from network of a lag. But how? I have also zero idea how I even manage this, but when I keep shanking, I found an article about this network boot in Minitools website. That is also sponsored! Well, okay, by the article, I found that I must have a PXE of Preboot Execution Environment or P that makes a file system protocol to stream the files directly via network. But hold up a second, then what the hell is Google Drive then? If it is not a cloud storage WTF well, hold up as well Google Drive is a cloud storage but for us users it is just a website HTTPS yeah I mean it have the same properties right but the reality is false for example like file protocols like NFP network file protocol file transfer protocol aren't the same as HTTP or HTTPS like from the file protocol you can basically host a Minecraft server, already install Windows and then stream it and then also stream anything. But when the Google Drive is Google, so it means they have it really secure up to avoid some illegal activities who for example tries to run Netstat from the Google Drive, leak some IP addresses and then the hacker can use them to easily DDoS even by its own Google Drive servers and Google will pay to the damage a lot of money bruh. They will still fly into the universe to pay. Russians are fine, that is bigger than our entire world economy. <laughs> but after that, they have it protected by HTTPS protocol that just sends HTML, PHP, CSS web request to your PC it is really safe and you cannot do dev exploits like that it acts just like a single drive without running on any PC server etc so as you just say here it is impossible to install Windows on it right who says it is impossible from the 
file protocols, you can basically host a Minecraft server, already install Windows, and then stream it. Alright, alright, alright. As I said, it acts like a USB drive. Bro, if you have, for example, a flash drive, and you have it unplugged, then you cannot access the files on it. Unless you have backup, but... Bro! And that is the same with the Google Drive. The reality is different, but that it runs on a server, so a PC that the storage has, so it is basically a PC that has this storage that you see in the Google Drive site and handles it, but it acts like when you do not have the internet, you also didn't have the flash plug. That means if you still install a Windows on it, it is practically the same as you install it on a flash, the single installed Windows will didn't work. If you have for example, the flash unplugged because it needs the computer to process the files and as I say, for this exists then a PXE to make your own file protocol via your PC. So it makes line to connect to my another PC, like a converter, etc. And to the final atom, that Google stores also emails, that mean passwords, information, who can specifically access the part of the drive, etc to make it even safer to access the Google Drive. So if we manage to get it somehow, like to hack the Google Drive file protocol, connect it directly to the LAN, well, you will still require the login details, but on the boot, they will not appear. So how we do it? If we need then an active PC with the active Google Drive purchases to store and manage the content, we plug our second PC into our main one. And hold up! You just say, yes, the Google Drive site. But the program is really interesting. If it does manipulate the system, as it is a real physic drive, so by manipulating even more, it gets more interesting. We learn, and to catch the operation, we use a program called Minitool Shadow Maker. Well, it can easily make a PXC server host. Um, okay, so yeah, this didn't work, it must be like sharing only the only the mini tools win PE. But okay, but it has also another features like backupping your entire drive, etc. So check the program out. Link is in the description. I think it is more useful than that. Back to the video. What about tiny PXE server? Oh wow, it is open source and the tutorial is even on the Dell site. Oh my god. And yeah. The download link didn't work, but by Wayback Machine, I get it. So then I just need to extract the files into the Google Drive. And here I saw that the installation process I did with the DISM was useless. I can only boot files from the ISO. Maybe I'm new to this. Maybe I can still access the files directly from the Google Drive, but who knows. So when I set everything up, And we go to the ThinkPad button, press the F, and yeah, so we have here a line support, support but the network boot is not ready yet, because we are, we are in the on offline mode, so let me a quick change it to online, and... Oh my god, okay, started. So, okay, let's take it. See, but the data, some how to need anything. So, let's test it out. What will happen? And it is initiating, and yeah, it is collecting data. Oh my god, look at that, oh my, okay, so the data is actually loading up. On the fifth try, it didn't work. I somehow cannot get the DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol and proxy DHCP. It even didn't show up any response, so 
I try this again and again and then I realized that the notebook I was using does not support UEFI and I had in the config UEFI boot file. So I switched to the PC that supports UEFI and try that again. Oh, and yeah. So starting over this IP. So it seems something that it works. So yeah, you know, no. Okay, so, but, yeah, it didn't seem to work, really, I don't know why. Nothing. I tried to disable legacy support, and, okay, it get the MAC address, but in my PC it shows okay, guys, IP 0.0.0.0. Wait, what? I try this again, and again. I try switch back to ThinkPad, where the... Proxy DHCP got to work, but the normal DHCP not. Hours and hours of making, trying. Okay, now guys, it passed. And I got this message. Something is wrong. <laughs> Getting blue screens of that, I just cannot make this done. But I think there is a way. I get too far. I also learn some things and still not get what I want. So that's why I am practically making this video. To ask you guys about this. To make this done. But with my, well, not enough stuff. I just kind of finish it. So you can join my Discord server. Where we will test some ways to make it possible. And finally make this video finished. Part 2. To be continued. Thanks for watching and any help with this will thank you a lot. Bye!